A benchmark suite containing results from Intel's upcoming flagship CPU was leaked, and it looks like we've got some more information surrounding the launch for AMD's mid-range RX 6000 GPUs. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here, welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. We've finally gotten some information in regards to a potential release date for AMD's mid-range graphics cards for the RX 6000 series, powered by the latest RDNA 2 architecture. This news comes from Calcotlin, who are a pretty well-known French hardware site. They claim to have gotten some insider information from one of their own sources, who state that the RX 6700 XT and RX 6700 have been scheduled for a launch near the end of the first quarter for this year, or in other words, the end of March. That's all the information they had to share, they haven't shared any additional information in regards to specs or pricing. As for the release date, it was expected for a while now that AMD would launch their mid-range RX 6000 graphics cards in 2021, and that it would be in Q1. I was personally thinking that if they had to pick the right date, it should have been at CES, which is a week from now, as this way they could have finally had an answer for Nvidia's mid-range card, the RTX 3060 Ti, which is, you know, already out. It actually came out last month, which I did a review on. And, you know, it's a pretty good mid-range option. That is, if you can actually, you know, find it near MSRP, because as of now, prices are just messed up. And we've also been hearing quite a lot of rumors and have seen leaks from AIBs that an RTX 3060 non-TI with 12 gigabytes of VRAM should be announced at NVIDIA's GeForce gaming event, which will be held on the 12th of January. If AMD had decided to make an announcement at CES, this way they would have had this market segment have another option from either, you know, Team Green or Team Red. And with current circumstances like low stock, at this point people are just willing to take whatever they can get their hands on first, regardless of whether that's an AMD or an NVIDIA GPU. Though now if this release date is true, then NVIDIA will be able to enjoy the mid-range market to themselves for a significant duration. Though I'm thinking that the only reason why AMD could have decided on a late Q1 launch is because they want to ensure that they have a decent amount of stock this time around, and they do better not to make any foolish statements on any social media channels in regards to that because we all know how that went. They have said that they'd have stock, but in actuality have even less stock than Nvidia, so it wasn't fun. Along with that, I also recently remember reading a report and actually can't for the life of me where exactly I saw it, but it mentioned that at TSMC, AMD were prioritizing wafers for console SoCs for Microsoft's uh, Xbox Series X and S consoles, as well as Sony's uh, PlayStation 5 consoles. They have both the digital and a disc version. As awesome as AMD's product portfolio sounds, they've spread themselves too thin at one manufacturing node that's shared between consoles, desktop chips, HEDT, server chips, and GPUs. So they are getting quite hampered with their supply, and it is understandable as to why they're having these supply issues. On the other hand, one could say, well, why not just, you know, announce them anyways? It's not like you can even buy the damn GPUs in the first place, it would be business as usual, so I doubt people would have cared too much whether it's released, you know, next week, next month, or in March. But we'll see. As for specs and pricing, we don't have much to go on as of now, but should start hearing more as we get closer to launch and start seeing data miners leak benchmark results and so forth. AIBs will probably also start leaking pricing. And if you were to ask me, I'm thinking that, you know, with the 6700 XT, AMD is probably going to be targeting that mid $400 range, and the 6700 non XT should probably be around that mid to high $300 mark. Moving on, and I wanted to talk about the leaked suite of benchmarks, which included Intel's upcoming flagship i9-11900K desktop processor. This was leaked by a Chinese hardware YouTuber and shared by video cards. Now take these results with a grain of salt. As a sample they may have uh, gotten their hands on, could have been an early engineering sample. Along with that, they could be using an early BIOS, which, you know, could be holding the CPU back and stuff due to bugs and all that. Also, it's been noted that in the gaming benchmarks, PCIe 3.0 is not enabled and instead is running at PCIe 1.1. Like I said, buggy or engineering BIOS, this is then causing a performance degradation in the results, so I'm just going to ignore those gaming benchmarks as they aren't in any way reflective of an actual real-world scenario or the results that you'd see from a properly configured system. I mean, you can see this for yourself in games like League of Legends, the FPS is a lot lower where you'd expect it to be, and we can be pretty confident that the 11900K will pull ahead as, you know, one of the best gaming CPUs on the market. So focusing on the CPU synthetic benchmarks, the i9-11900K scores as you'd expect it to be. It seems to be faster than both the Ryzen 9 5900X and the 
i9-10900K, Intel's previous gen flagship, but loses by a significant margin when it comes to multi-core performance. And the reason for this is because Rocket Lake will only top out at 8 cores. And if you're interested, I will link my previous video where I discuss other leaks and rumors surrounding Rocket Lake, but taking into account the information we have so far, Rocket Lake isn't going to be all that exciting. Perhaps the i7-11700K will be the most appealing in the lineup if Intel can get pricing right. But the i9 makes no sense. Think about it, consumers buying CPUs in the i9 or Ryzen 9 segment aren't necessarily dropping all that money to get the best gaming CPU or, you know, the highest single core performance out of the box because they can attain nearly the same performance with much cheaper options such as the 11700K or 5800X. And speaking of the 5800X, as of now it's definitely a bit overpriced. I know a lot of hardware enthusiasts would have liked to see the 5800X at $400 and not $450. So if Intel releases the 11700K with an MSRP of around $399 or $389, they'll have a winner on their hands in that segment. But circling back to what I was saying for the i9, people in that segment are most likely going to be interested in a CPU with good multi-core performance because they're either going to be doing some content creation or streaming, in which case this 8-core i9 simply won't be able to keep up against the 10900K, 10850K, Ryzen 9 3900X, and Ryzen 9 5900X, and you know, let's not even talk about the 16-core variants. Unless Intel has a change of heart and massively undercuts all their SKUs, you know, this is Intel we're talking about, so that's probably not going to happen. The I, I don't see this i9 succeeding. As for a release date, they're saying that Intel is expected to announce the products next week at CES 2021, but won't actually hard launch them until March, and this was recently confirmed by Gigabyte in a press release for their up upcoming Z590 boards where they specifically mentioned the 11th gen Intel Core processors will be launched on March 2021. So they're not too far away, and from there you can temper your expectations as supply probably won't be as abundant either for the new series, as is the case for every piece of hardware these days. But like I said, Rocket League really isn't worth getting all excited for, where Intel is probably going to make their big comeback will be with Alder Lake and hopefully 2022 as that will be a totally brand new architecture using a unique big little core design as we've seen with mobile processors. So that should be very interesting and you know I look forward to it. I hope you guys found this video to be informative and helpful. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out the video description on ways to support the channel and for my other videos. If you guys are interested in more content like this then make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you guys in the next one.